Okay, um, Claudia Berlin here, hi. Um, I had to make this because I have a channel, I have a platform, and I wouldn't be able to forgive myself on this channel if I didn't cover these topics. Um, I, I know that sometimes political videos can be controversial, um, you can get trolled for them, and also people don't enjoy them because, you know, there's not so much entertainment value, I do understand that, like I want to put more happiness into the world so there will be other sorts of videos, mental health recovery, all those kind of things. But my basic principles and values are anti-fascist, um, I'm on the left, I'm a socialist, I'm anti-racism of all kinds and basically we are sliding into fascism here in the UK. I have spoken about this in different videos before and it's kind of all come to a head because there's a new bill that the current Tories are trying to put through, the illegal migration bill. So we saw Rishi Sunak recently stepping out with a stop the boats podium and I think it seems like quite a sudden leap for people who haven't really been following what's going on. Um, I don't want to be like all oh, I told you so because I'm not the most educated and you know I've learned a lot from other people you know I, I I wasn't perfect on it but I have been following what's going on and we are following a trajectory that takes us towards fascism and a lot of harm taking place so there's a couple of things I wanted to kind of touch on here so first of all um, there will be people who do this so much better I'm going to link in the description box any articles I can find about the specific illegal migration bill um, the specific legal challenges because there are going to be legal challenges. So basically it's against international law. People do have the right to claim asylum and, and I wrote some things down when I was watching this, I, I watched this on the BBC News the other night and actually I believe the BBC is meant to be our impartial broadcaster, this is how far we've fallen. I did actually tweet because I couldn't kind of believe what I was seeing. This is something I heard on the BBC. Okay so the BBC News presenter and I don't know who it was, it was just some guy that um, they're supposed to be impartial on the BBC. We know the BBC is an impartial, look what they've done to Jeremy Corbyn. Um, they basically represent the status quo, but um, on the BBC News they said, how can we stop the flow across the border? Which I'm sure you can recognise is already incredibly charged and incredibly dangerous. We're already in a situation where uh, the sentiment against refugees and asylum seekers who are brown, Middle Eastern or black basically. I mean, it's, it's kind of different with, with Ukrainians. I'm not saying that we're brilliant with Ukrainians. There's still a lot of xenophobia and there's a lot of people who, you know, don't think that we should be helping refugees at all, you know. But there's certainly been a lot of fear-mongering and it's not just a recent thing. This has been going on over a really long period of time, especially people who are from Muslim countries, for example. This idea that they're dangerous and they're flooding in and they're using up our resources. And of course, like, this is just, this is classic, you know, it's, it's, it's the playbook they always use, isn't it? There's corruption at the top, people want to maintain power, they turn the vulnerable on the vulnerable. So for example, even though we're quite a wealthy country, technically, they're not spreading the wealth out because there's poverty in certain areas and make no mistake, they make sure there's poverty in certain areas. They need that poverty to exist because those people who want change, right? People who are from here, for example, they need to be kept busy, like, you know, working every second, but also being devalued at the same time because they can never know their worth. And then they get taught, you know, oh, patriotism is the way you feel worth because we've actually stripped you of your worth, which, you know, it it's like, it's like abuse anyway. You know, I talk about abuse systems, but that's what it is, right? We devalue you from birth. We devalue you through capitalism. We devalue you as working class people. And then we offer you a sense of pride, which doesn't actually mean anything, which is, you know, Britishness, etc. And then they turn you because you're right to be turned on other vulnerable people because they realise that if the different vulnerable people around the world, like, united as siblings around the world, because we're all just human beings and it's a complete coincidence, an, act an accident of birth where we're born, uh, that we could actually top all the people who are benefiting at the top. And these conditions have been stoked for a really long time. So if you look about, so if you look at like the Shamima Begum situation, that's been laying the groundwork. If you look at the tabloids, the language they use, if you've been keeping track of this, what they've done to, for example, they've, they've kind of eradicated the left. Jeremy Corbyn, who I'll kind of talk about in this video briefly, um, is an anti-racist campaigner, um, was the leader of the Labour Party, the leader of the opposition. He's been smeared, people who supported him have been smeared, everything's been turned around, so uh, a lifelong anti-racist is now being smeared as a terrible racist, so the opposition's gone. Everything is... Uh, people on the left, this is not me talking about the left, or, like, I know I make videos about this and I do a podcast called Complaints on a Plate where we talk about these issues, but, you know, people on the left are often accused if they criticise the Labour Party of, of letting the Tories in, but in history what actually happens is the centre keeps moving right 
And then by the time things move dangerously right, the reasonable people in the centre suddenly act all surprised, like, wow, how could this have happened? You know, I thought we were all reasonable people here. Like, it, it's 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 just really bad, and the people who campaigned get smeared, and sure, you know, retrospectively, I'm sure people are remembered as, like, you know, heroes and people who stood up at the time, but it's not popular to do that at the time. And there seems to be this idea among reasonable, normal, centrist people who would call themselves centrist, but everything's shifted so much that it's kind of right wing now. The good people, reasonable people don't question the status quo. And that's also why you've got a situation with patriotism where they've shifted it so questioning patriotism, like look at the sort of poppy stuff here. You know, there are certain icons of being British. That's why Harry and Meghan are so important in looking into this. And if you're watching this as someone who's political, you're probably thinking, why is she talking about the royal family? Why does she do that on this channel? Because I think all these different uh, distractions, the things they focus on, they highlight, they target different areas um, of dissent, right? So they represent they represent people who want to progress an institution. They are the perfect targets as sort of woke snowflakes. They're ruining our institutions. So that's they're serving that purpose. And that's why I talk about that as well, because it ties into the whole political atmosphere. The idea of people who aren't one of us coming in or or those of us that, that you know, are from here and happen to be white, because, of course, with the Shamima Begum ruling, someone like me, when I criticise Britain because I've got an Indian dad and I've got an in Indian family and actually I've got Jewish heritage as well, I've got quite a mix in my background, um, if I am to criticise Britain uh, then I am unpatriotic and therefore I'm not one of you, I lose my status as being British whereas someone who's white British and has had their family living here for ages um, is still kind of I, I won't say it's easy for them because they're now using people like, for example, Harry is the avatar of this, Prince Harry's the avatar of this. They cannot possibly have white men allying with these causes. So they have to smear and humiliate him. Like, it's like this desperate, desperate clawing of them to think, shut that down. You know, we've got to use humiliation to shut that down immediately. They're also using trans panic as a kind of uh, distraction right now. But what they're really doing, if you look at um, fascism and surges to the right that happen... And this is all over the place, but, you know, I, I write poetry about this um, and I, I find it easier sometimes to express via poetry. Maybe at some point I'll read poetry on the channel and put it up, I don't know. But people think here that fascism, uh, Nazism, you know, is this specific thing to Germany, right? Or, or that time period. Or Putin's Russia is very specific. And yeah, sure, there are, there are differences, of course. No fascism around the world changes different ideologies ideologies kind of merge and change cultures are different it's all very different but the actual idea of fascism doesn't come from an immediate intent to you know be fascist you know it starts with uh we can make you strong again you know make america great again like here it's like british patriotism you know the royal family support the troops and and to go against that is being a traitor you know people finding identity they're they're ground down by the system they're devalued by capitalism they are they are basically made completely wretched the services are deliberately falling apart make no mistake that the nhs there is a jeremy corbyn talked about this sorry if i'm all over the place but i feel really passionately about it with the nhs we're so lucky to have it here in britain right it's one of the best things that we have here because it means that if you're ill if you're sick then you are entitled to healthcare. you know you don't have to pay for your health care in an emergency so someone who's in a real financial struggle will be able to get treated with the NHS. They are defunding the NHS very slowly, so it moves towards privatisation. And they're not immediately saying, oh, you know, we'll get rid of the NHS. In fact, they masked it because they started clapping the NHS during COVID, you know. Meanwhile, when the nurses and doctors strike, they are then presented as, as people that we no longer feel proud of, that they have gone against us all. How dare they ask for more? They're so entitled. They are defunding the NHS and then offering privatisation as the remedy, although they've defunded the NHS, right? Just so they can get privatisation in and make their money from it. But trans panic is a big one because part of fascism, what they kind of lean on is the idea of like the degenerate other kind of thing. So in, you know, you, you see that in Nazi Germany, you know, you see that, that it was this idea that, you know, like degenerate kind of like Berlin and and different people who are liberal people of different genders or sexualities are seen to be like dangerous people a threat to family you know they're a danger and we should be afraid of them we see that happening here uh with trans people right now there is a disproportionate fear and anger being 
being kind of pointed at, at trans people, which makes no sense, by the way. And this is not a video about this, but it doesn't make sense. It's it's a smokescreen, right? It's it's a look over there tactic again, because it's something that people don't necessarily understand. Uh, people that have been sort of monstered, uh, people get afraid, or they've made to be afraid of people who are outside the binary. You can kind of see that in politics too. People who question systems, whistleblowers. They're seen as dangerous because they're outside a certain binary. But, you know, if you look at our institutions, the Met, for example, Met Police at the moment, we're seeing sexism, homophobia, you know, dangerous stuff coming out of the Met recently. It doesn't make sense. You know, this is not a video about this and I will make it at some point. But the danger to women, you know, the big danger to women is, is not trans women. You know, there are other ways. It's this idea of an outsider. It's this, this is why I'm, I'm kind of linking this stuff together. It's the idea of an outsider sneaking their way in and like corrupting things that's the fear it doesn't make sense though because if you were um you know for example a cis male predator and you wanted to prey on women and you wanted to use your power to do that you wouldn't need to pretend to be trans in order to do that because you have places like the police you know there are easier ways to do it i'm not saying that trans people are perfect and that all trans people are amazing you know kind of thing i i, I feel everyone in every group is so very different and I've kind of moved away from, you know, my politics, the politics of identity politics, where, you know, the whole group is this or the whole group is that. You know, I feel like when you're younger and, you know, I, I started off out as quite a liberal, so I was very much into representation. But what I what I now think is that, you know, representation is important, but it's the content which matters more. You know, it's not enough to just get certain faces in the room. It matters what's being said and that's kind of what we're seeing right now so a tweet that this has gone all over the place i'm sorry if you're keeping up uh, thank you <laughs> you're you're amazing um i've got adhd i go all over the place so what we've actually got is a tweet that i wanted to bring onto the screen here and i wouldn't usually boost this person so this is this is a darren grimes tweet uh, and it's a tweet that says, does this look like the Nazi party in the 1930s to you? I need to give you some context on this. So we've got a football commentator here called Gary Lineker. I don't know what he does now. I feel like he's a football pundit. I think he's he's quite big in the BBC. He's kind of quite a centrist celebrity. You know, I'm not 100%. I don't love his politics, but he's not, he's not a right winger, you know. And he dared to, when the immigration, this illegal migration bill came out he dared to say and this is his tweet okay this is the crime because there has been chaos here for about three days there has been this intense focus like how dare this man on his twitter account say this because he's he's supposed to be impartial because he's on the bbc the live bbc impartiality that's a joke anyway he tweeted this there is no huge influx we take far fewer refugees than other major european countries this is just an immeasurably cruel policy directed at the most vulnerable people in language that is not dissimilar to that used by germany in the 30s and because of this tweet it's an accurate tweet first of all all hell has broken loose here. That's how far we've gone and that's why everything connects. We have become so right-wing, we have surged so far that our current Labour Party is currently acting like this man and what he said, which is completely correct and is completely tame, is now like, he's too radical. Oh, we shouldn't have said that. That's very inflammatory. I'm sorry, what happened to humanity? What happens to people caring about human lives rather than the optics of being reasonable? I, I feel like I'm going insane because to me it feels incredibly reasonable to care, to care about human lives. Now the big thing he's getting accused of here is, oh, how dare you make comparisons to Germany in the 30s, right? Because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to say that the government is kind of acting like, how dare you, that's actually, the new line is that that's actually offensive somehow to victims of the nazis how on earth they've twisted this i don't know why i'm saying how on earth i know how and why they've done it look what they did to jeremy corbyn look what they do to people like michael rosen look what they've done to heather mendick basically we're at a point where caring about other human beings and having a knowledge of fascism having a knowledge of how that grows and actually applying that is actually somehow unreasonable and crankish now like that's too radical and that was always the aim of why they smeared corbyn because they needed to make his position, which is democratic socialism, he's a democratic socialist, they had to make that that worldview something that's incredibly dangerous, rather than something that's rooted in empathy and compassion. And they've obviously succeeded. Um, our Labour Party is now basically condemning Gary Lineker for saying something completely 
correct. I've already said this, but in this country we have this idea that fascism is the Nazis, right? They don't understand. It's patriotism that turns into nationalism. It's feeling like, oh no, others are sort of coming in. It's it's a sort of a hatred for, for the left, right? The left de degenerates and, oh no, we're losing our family values. It's a disdain for human rights. And that's the point of this bill, I believe. Because this bill can't pass under international law. It's been put out there to signal to the public, right? That, you know, but who've been who've been kind of conditioned to think, oh no, our greatest uh, problem is people coming across on boats, on small boats and often drowning. I think what's going to happen is um, it's going to get taken. There's so many legal challenges that, that can be made on this based on the rights that refugees do have. And I think the aim is to get people so angry that people want to do a Brexit kind of thing and they think, right, okay, so let's let's leave that. You know, let's let's get rid of that European human rights stuff. We don't need it. You know, let's have our own British Bill of Rights. That's where this is going. I've said this before, and I've been smeared as a crank, and oh no, you're too hysterical. You're making too much of a fuss about it. At what point are people gonna actually wake up to what is happening here? And also, you know, this thing with, with the boats, the, the angle that they're using, you know, I don't disagree with the very basic notion, and this, this is how they do it. Right, it's like with Shamima Begum. So they've essentially put into place a two-tier citizenship system where you're conditionally British, right? If you have, if you can technically claim dual nationality from a parent or grandparent, they can make you stateless. And they've done it because people inherently feel like, well, you know, maybe she's a danger. And, and that's another conversation about how much of a danger Shamima Begum is. I've spoken about that before, but that's what it was about, right? So they'll do that on people that we've been made to fear. And obviously, you know, it, it, they can make it sound so reasonable because they'll say something like, but you know, she supported the so-called Islamic State. And obviously, you know, we disagree with that, don't we? And obviously people are gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> obviously, obviously we disagree with that. And then they'll move on and say, right, we're stripping her rights. But what they're doing with this is it's, it's absolutely true that, um, you know, so we know that there are there are there are people traffickers, human traffickers, who are you know crime gangs who are uh, taking advantage of people who are very vulnerable and charging them money for these dangerous crossings, and and that's the reasonable angle. That's how they've kind of managed to do this, because I think most of us can agree that that is not a good thing that's happening, right? But their solution, and you have to think about this, their solution is okay. So we stop the boats, we make it illegal to come here, even though you're allowed legally to claim asylum. They're not opening up, you know, they're not saying, it's not about the safety of those people, right? That's what it's, 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 it's just a veneer. It's so that, that liberals and people in the centre can feel okay with themselves and their own, like, bigotry. Because they can say, oh, you know, we just don't like the crime. If you, if you didn't, if you just don't want those people to be victimised, then you need to be standing up for legal roots, right? And you would not be in favour of this bill. Like, I understand, of course, nobody wants... Uh, human traffickers to be doing this but from there we get to oh, all these dangerous people flooding in protect our borders you know they can spin us however they want because if they're spinning it to more openly right-wing people they'll just be really blatant and be like you know protect our borders nobody wants people flooding in you know but then what they do to the sort of the new the kind of liberals who have who think they're the left because they've destroyed the actual left and they're actually just like a and an, they're more than an annoyance they're a danger at this point to progress because they can say well of course you know we don't want the people smuggling you know let's all agree on that and it's like okay so what are you going to do to make it so that we take in refugees that need our help like what are you going to do to help those people because if you don't have that solution if your mentality is that these people are villains it's like the trans thing again right so people will say oh i just care about the rights of women because people will cover it right they'll say oh i just care about the rights of women but then they totally tell on themselves because if it was genuinely about caring about women right and women's rights it would never veer into you know all oh, trans people are dangerous you're in that argument the danger is still cisgender men because you're the people that you're worried about would be cisgender male predators pretending to be trans to get into women's uh, spaces right that would be the argument yet it also veers into making out like trans people are like dangerous people and spreading this kind of panic about trans people 
So it doesn't make sense. You know, the good faith people in that argument, although I think they're wrong, will not be scaremongering about trans people, right? They will be understanding that trans people are also victims of this because essentially the danger is cis people, is cisgender men pretending to be trans and, you know, in their argument, getting into those spaces, right? They tell on themselves all the time. And people are getting so angry that Gary Lineker has said that the language is not dissimilar to that used by Germany in the 1930s. He's right. Sorry, at what point are we supposed to just deny reality? You know, if we don't learn from history, then what's the point? Of course people are going to be kicking up and saying, oh, that's an offensive comparison. Offensive to who? You know, I've seen people saying that it's offensive to victims of the Nazis. How on earth can it be offensive to victims of the Nazis to look at how the Nazis took power? Because people imagine that the Nazis just emerged, right? They did not just emerge. There was a complex situation. The people in Germany, this is like, sorry, I, I know this, this is controversial, it shouldn't be controversial. The people in Germany at that time were no better or worse than anybody else, right, in any other country. We are all susceptible in our different societies in different ways to different sorts of hatred and propaganda. And it starts with patriotism, nationalism, all those things I spoke about earlier. They were not uniquely evil. That's not to say that what the reg regime did was, wasn't evil, it's one of the greatest evils that we can think of, but the people in it didn't, you know, it didn't start off that way. You know, I read a poem before, a Michael Rosen poem, about how fascists do not immediately start goose-stepping into the room with swastikas, right? They don't, it doesn't happen like that. They say they're going to restore your pride, and it's like patriotism, and anyone who isn't patriotic is a traitor, and you should get out of here. And it just so happens that people who are considered other, even though they're British, if they criticise the idea of patriotism, then they're no longer British, and you're not one of us, and you've betrayed us. You know, there's a presenter called Adil Ray. So he's British, he's from Birmingham, but he's mixed. So um, it says that his, his mother, I've just got this on the screen here so I get it right, his father is a Pakistani Muslim, and his mother is Kenyan. Uh, he was born in Birmingham, he was born here, and he often uh, he presents Good Morning Britain, he's done different comedy shows, etc, etc. Now the responses he's got in terms of the growing fascism and this dangerous language and the way people are talking about immigration and refugees and this bill has been for people to tell him, if you don't like it, get out, you're not one of us, what are you doing? Here. This is something that happens if you are mixed race, right? If you are, I get this too, somebody white who talks about this issue, they will get called, sure they'll get called a traitor. You know, I'm not saying it's easy for them because we've moved up a gear now where they're doing it to anyone who's a threat who's white as well is also being called like adjacent, you know, and a, a traitor and all they're into terrorism. It's, it's that extreme, you know, they present it that extreme. But if you are someone who is mixed, then it's like you're not actually one of us and you never were because you have to prove how British you are, and that means you can't criticise anything. If you were born here, but they don't view you as one of them, because you've got mixed race parentage or something, then it's not just that you're a traitor, it's that you were never one of them, that you failed their test, and that you don't deserve to be here, and that you are not part of things. You know, it's a very, very different vibe, and it's so dangerous. But this man is getting told by people that he shouldn't be here. And the racism is heavy. And I talk about this in the Meghan and Harry videos because racism in Britain right now is not necessarily slurs, right? It's conditionally, it's conditional respect, right? You, you can only really see the sort of racism and it works with sexism too, all these other things. If the person's agreeing with you, right? If the person is being your mouthpiece, then sure, you're going to get well treated. Of course you are. What happens when a person of colour disagrees with something, right? What happens when a woman disagrees with with something? Is it is she just considered to be, you know, like a critic with a valid point of view? And I'm not saying you can't disagree with somebody, but is that the vibe? Or are they dismissed and completely devalued and undermined as a person? And that is why, leading into the tweet that I was taking us to, thank you ADHD, it's the tweet by Darren Grimes, and I wanted to talk a little bit about identity politics. So I'm going to put the tweet on the screen right now. And I am so glad that he put this here. Right, so does this look like the Nazi party in the 1930s to you? And he's put, um, you know, basically uh, Tories, pe people of colour who are Tories, right? So right now, we are in a new age of optics, social media, and the rights and fascists have become very, very clever at weaponizing this. And this is something that I feel like a lot of us were not ready for 
and still are not prepared for. So I basically, this is what I responded. I'm kind of glad he's done this because what we're looking at is the face of modern fascism, getting people of colour to front it for better optics. We're in an age of branding and imagery because that's what this is. You know, it's like, uh, for example, Margaret Thatcher, the first female prime minister here uh, in Britain, and people act like she was, this was a feminist move even though she was anti-feminist just because she was a woman. It's not enough to just have people in the room, right? She actively made life worse for women and minorities. But what we're seeing is this move in the age of optics. And this is why those of us who are genuinely honest people, we can't... Optics... Sometimes optics don't matter. Like, they don't. We live in an age of branding, but sometimes it's about what's right and what's wrong, right? Sometimes you have to do what you think is right, say what you think is right, because this is an age where people know how to brand things. It is not a mistake that the Tory party is using people of colour to front these campaigns because it is basically a shield for them. It is the left who are accused of identity politics, but it is the right who are currently weaponising this right now because they are showing us, like, Rishi Sunak is a South Asian prime minister. And I'm not going to say that that's not important in terms of um, representation, in terms of, you know, so, such and such a person can get to power. It is important in terms of very basic representation, of course it is. But you need to look at what that person's doing. Because I'm telling you, they are using... And, and I think that they know it, right? I think the people of colour in that party know it. Like, let's be honest, any of us who are mixed race, right, or people of colour, or minority, we know how this goes, right? If, if any of you... I, I mean, I've had my own experiences, which I won't get onto here. But have any of you ever been used for diversity, right? So it's like you are a face in the room right? Uh, people want to use the fact that you're there because you're a certain identity, which is which is good and that's fine. But then also when your experience as that person from that group uh, diverges from what the other people, from what the person at the top wants, suddenly you're smeared and silenced, right? Because you're not the right sort of minority. This is the new sort of identity politics, right? So I'm always sceptical when I see like moves from like the BBC towards representation because it's not enough on its own. Is it representation if you're just getting brown faces in so that, you know, you can get them to say what you want them to say? What are you doing to people from that group who don't agree with you? I'm not saying that we have to agree with every person from every group, but it's that idea, isn't it, of the good or the bad minority. And isn't it funny how the good minorities, the ones that are, you know, treated with some sort of respect, tend to be the ones who are saying the things that the people from the, from the, <laughs> from the large group... <laughs> from the majority group of power that they, they, they want them to say you know isn't that convenient sorry if i just moved i get a lot of technical trouble with this so the last portion of this video didn't record so recording it in now so basically i wanted to bring us towards keir starmer who's the current leader of the opposition because we now have a labor party who it's so depressing that our labor party right now is kind of telling off people like gary lineker who are standing up for human rights and, and basically what he said was tame it really was. It was just a very humane, gentle, compassionate thing to say, right? That we need to be careful, you know, language like that was thrown around in the 1930s. This is what they did to others and refugees and, oh no, we're all full up, we don't have room for anyone else. And that became very dangerous, right? But our grown-up, reasonable, responsible Labour Party, oh no, naughty Gary Lineker, that's that's too far, apparently. He's he's turning into a terrible crank, isn't he? Like, wow, maybe he's just totally crazy and no one should listen to him like that Jeremy Corbyn. You know, because there's nothing worse, there is nothing more evil in this world than having a passion for other human beings, is there? <laughs> worst thing in the world. Absolutely worst thing in the world. So I saw his response to this whole immigration bill and I want to say I was shocked, but I wasn't shocked. I was just increasingly it feels like you're just falling downstairs on a staircase repeatedly with Keir Starmer because every time you think he's gone as bad as it can go it gets worse so what I want to read to you is his response our opposition right now this is the response to this proposed bill which is going to break international law denies people their rights and their dignity Keir Starmer of course is the big human rights lawyer, supposedly. This is apparently what it was all for, you know, the coup, bringing down Jeremy Corbyn. It was also this man, this man could get into power and what's he gonna do with his power? Well, he's gonna kind of do the same as the Tories, but 
with a bit more efficiency, I guess. Okay, so this is the quote from Keir Starmer in PMQs. I believe it is. Um, it was basically transcribed. If this is wrong, I will check it. I'll take it out of the video. This is what he said in response to this horrifying bill. Nobody on the Labour benches wants open borders. Those on the Conservative benches have lost control of the borders. The Prime Minister promised the country that the bill will stop all small boat crossings, no ifs, no buts. But it sounds like more talk. So in the interest of adequate action, when will he achieve that? When I was in charge of prosecutions, I extradited countless rapists and the conviction rate for people smuggling was twice what it is today. I voted against the Prime Minister's legislation last time because I said it would not work. Since it became law, the numbers have gone up. He has proved me right. He should be apologising, not gloating. The Prime Minister says the government will detain people who are not eligible to claim asylum here and then return them. Well, they already tried that under the last legislation. Last year, 18,000 people were deemed ineligible to apply for asylum. That is the easy bit, the talk. But as for the action, Prime Minister, how many of them have actually been returned? All that nonsense because the Prime Minister does not want to answer the question. He knows what the answer is. The number is 21. I thought he was a man of detail. The number is 21. 21 people out of the 18,000. What happens to the rest? They sit in hotels and digs for months on end at the taxpayer's expense. Last year, he promised to end the hotel farce. That is the talk. But because of this mess, there are thousands of people who cannot claim asylum and cannot be returned. So where does he actually think they are going to end up? And to say I'm appalled with this is an understatement. I am openly frightened by it. Basically, it's the same far right ideas that he's just taking on in order to seem reasonable because no matter how far things move he won't do what's right morally he has to be popular so he will go for the popular vote in the middle and the tories will drag us right and they're laughing basically because if keir starmer gets in it will just swing back to the tories again and we'll just move further right because the actual socialists have been crushed. Those on the conservative benches have lost control of the borders. Can you actually believe that this is the leader of the opposition saying that we have lost control of our borders? You know, it's this this idea that, you know, all these dangerous people coming in. The Prime Minister promised the country that the bill will stop all small boat crossings, but it sounds like more talk and not enough action. So he's not even countering the notion itself. You know, I of course, none of us want, uh, you know, human traffickers, human smugglers to be benefiting from this. That is obviously true of everyone across the spectrum. But his problem is not this bill for its legality, considering he's a human rights lawyer, supposedly. His problem is that the Prime Minister has only spoken about it and hasn't done it. You tell me this man's not going to be a danger when he's in power. He then, for some reason, for some bizarre reason, talks about when he was in charge of prosecutions, extraditing rapists. Please tell me why Keir Starmer, who's supposed to be this intelligent, educated man, is, is bringing that up right now. Tell me why, we know. He said he voted against the legislation just because it wouldn't work. Not because he doesn't agree with it, on principle, because it wouldn't work. He's, he doesn't disagree with the idea. So basically, Rishi Sunak is not tough enough. Like, yeah, sure, he says he's going to do these things. But Keir Starmer, Keir Starmer would actually get it done. Like, you want people deported, right? They've only managed to deport, like, 21 people. Labour's going to be take thousands of them, right? Vote Labour. Vote Labour so we can have control of our borders and send them all back. He's basically mocking Rishi Sunak and the Tories for only speaking in far-right terms, right? Not actually acting on it. There's no principle. When are people going to wake up? He also says that uh, basically the uh, the asylum seekers that come here, they sit in hotels and digs for months on ends at the t at the taxpayer's expense. He calls it the hotel farce. We have already seen what is happening here in terms of people thinking that asylum seekers, oh, they're getting better treatment than us, you know, how dare they, you know, our taxpayers' money is putting them in hotels, they're living a life of luxury. This is far-right rhetoric coming from the leader of the opposition. When will people just, do you know what, it doesn't matter about pride, when are people just going to wake up and say, you know what, we were wrong about Starmer? Do you know what, maybe something's gone wrong. There is still time to still recognise what was done to Jeremy Corbyn, what's been done to the left, and what Starmer is doing right now. Right, so that's Starmer's response, which is basically that, yeah, you talk the talk, but, you know, you don't get rid of them. Labour will. Labour will properly get rid of them. You know, your problem is you're putting them up in hotels, you're giving them the high life. Don't worry, we'll be sending them back by the thousands. Now, Jeremy Corbyn's response, this is the man that's been smeared as a dangerous, radical, racist. The Tories are willing to break international law just to make life harder for people fleeing war and persecution. We have a responsibility to challenge their hateful narrative and defend a humane alternative. That means demanding safe routes for those just trying to survive. You look at those two things and you tell me honestly who the good man is. 
who's the good person who's the good human being here and it's not even about necessarily jeremy corbyn because like with what they're doing with harry and megan in a certain way um uh, making them out to be these hate figures that no one wants to associate with and if you defend them you know you're anti anti-british and you're a woke snowflake and you know you're into psycho babble and you're a victim etc and you shouldn't be listened to that kind of mockery is the same thing they're doing on the political scale with jeremy corbyn because they've tried to make him such a dangerous awful terrible individual that you know anyone who who has similar policies to him is also shouldn't be listened to because they're cranks essentially right standing up for human rights makes you a crank and you don't want that you don't want humiliation like jeremy corbyn's gone through do you this is actually genuinely dangerous i cannot i cannot say this enough it's actually scary and it and it's completely right it is completely right that that someone should say with their humanity that we should be worried because this is what happened in the 30s in germany right that is not disrespecting victims the, the best thing you can do to honor victims and this is again why i get so angry when it comes to remembrance day but you also have people there that are perpetuating further conflict instead of finding diplomacy and peace because the real way to honor victims is to make sure there are no more victims right if we do not learn from our histories it will repeat and we have failed here in britain because we haven't taught about the empire we've taught about the second world war in terms of we were the good guys germany were the bad guys but we haven't looked at how it happened there and how it could happen anywhere we don't teach that we are failing at doing that and that's that's why we are here i probably missed so much stuff out of this video and it's not planned apart from i literally just wrote some random words on a on like a piece of paper um like bullet point list this is where we are right now um it's a really really scary time because we don't have opposition you know, it's been successful. Whatever Keir Starmer is doing has been successful because where's the opposition now? And now the Tories are doing this and Labour are so interested in, in being popular that they don't even challenge inhumanity. That worries me. That really, really worries me. And I won't have anyone say to me, how can you say that? They're the only alternative to the Tories. I'm sorry, I don't want to live in a world where it's like open, open fascism or a more organised, polite version of fascism. Something has to change. Anyway, love you loads, and I will see you really soon. Okay, love you, be well, bye.